as he passed away a few months later. I would like to conclude this brief reminiscence with a quotation from one of his classic early lectures that illustrates the breadth and depth of his teaching. He said, this is a changing world. You will disappear one day, this earth will disappear, and this galaxy will disappear. The visible world will change and its history end, but movement itself, change, is endless, constant, and immortal. Everything in the marvelous universe is changing. The law of change is the key to all questions of peace, of happiness, of health, and of justice. Your manifestation of God or one infinity, you change yourself within infinity, the realm of universal spirit, and together we enjoy the eternal dance of Inanya. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. And let's see. Let's um, go to Warren. Okay. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi, Bettina and Hi. Alex. Thanks so much for making this happen. Um, you know, when, when you asked me to share a little bit about Michio on this special day, I thought, okay, what, what means the most to me to speak about in regard to that? And I, then I thought, you know, the incredible opportunity I had those about 11 years to scribe for Michio, it was funny, initially when I started scribing, I thought I was uh, gonna learn so much about what to recommend in different case situations with different illnesses. And reflecting back over the years, that was actually the minor thing that really has impacted me over these years after. And I thought I would share some things about that that I know will stay with me the rest of my life. So, and honoring Michio. Uh, I was beside myself, I still am, with the patience that this man had day in and day out through counseling when I would be almost at my wit's end and I'm just there scribing for him. But it was incredible how he gave everyone the time of day. And moreover, when people left him, everyone was so empowered. And people still say that to this day, who saw him for counseling many years ago, how ha they still remember that, how happy they felt and how grateful they were for the patience that this man had with them. And as confronting as that is in my own life, because I, I can't say I've always been very patient, uh, it's been very inspiring. So that's one thing. He said to me one day that uh, seeing very ill people was the most valuable thing, most precious thing that we could do as a human being, seeing people and helping people. And I remember him mentioning, even if, someone very ill was only able to practice macrobiotics one day, that it was still incredibly important that they do that and how they passed on to the next world. And that came out of me saying um, to him that uh, many of my cancer patients I've been working with and my traveling cooking jobs had passed away. And he was basically trying to console me because I, I really wanted to stop traveling and teaching cooking. And then he made that point and I, I just, I couldn't believe, I never, I never heard that before. So it was very powerful. One day he also was very upset with me when I asked him if he gets tired seeing ill people all the time. And I mean very upset with me when I asked him that question. And he actually responded saying, then you don't understand what macrobiotic counseling or health counseling is and you must reflect on that, okay? I was always amazed with Michio's incredible intuition, and I'd like to share something about that. It's a long story, but I'm gonna make it very brief. I was planning on going to Kiental, Switzerland, to study at the Macrobiotic Center there. It was, the trip was gonna happen in about a week, and I told him I was leaving. 
And he looked at me in this funny way, just looking at my face and said to me, turned his head, be careful when you go there, maybe some danger. And I'm like, oh my goodness. I, I said to him, should I cancel my trip? He goes, no, he said, no, just be very careful. Chew well and be very careful, you'll be fine. I get to Cantel and I got there a little late for dinner that first night, so I was eating by myself. I'm sitting there eating some, uh, a sweet brown rice dish with a zuki bean. And all of a sudden there's something in my mouth that's hard and sharp. I take it out and it was a piece of glass, large glass. First thing I thought of was, of course, Michio. I asked them what, what happened, they, they were beside themselves. Some glasses broke near the bowl where they were soaking the rice and they thought they got it all. It was the glass. Secondly, on the way home, I was, and, and Swiss, as I think you know, are like this with the time, I actually was getting off a train to go to the next train and part of the Swiss army came on the train and kind of like barreled me over that I ended up having to pretty much run to catch that train, which is my last connection to the airport. When I got home, I told Michio this and he just smiled and that was it. One other thing about intuition. I'll never forget this. I'm sitting in his office. It was in between consults and he gets a phone call from France. And this, someone he knows very well I'm doing business with apparently, is telling Michio, Michio, I can't find the document. I can't find the document. What, what do I do? And again, he turns his head, he says, look in third drawer down and your desk at bottom. Should be there. I'm waiting to hear, I'm like, seriously? This cannot be. He goes to the third drawer, bottom of the desk, and there is the paper. I'm like, forget it. So what, what, did, I, what did I get from that? It's about intuition, about being connected. What Michio would say, of course, good eating, but just mind boggling, just mind boggling. I, I couldn't believe it. So to this day, what I got from that is really trying as best I can to listen to my intuition, even though sometimes it may not seem right, but usually um, it, is, it is correct. It is correct. And lastly, I'd like to share, and uh, actually I see Carol up there and she'll appreciate this. And I don't even know if she ever heard this, Carol Loro. So early on when I was driving Micho around to different lectures, one of the places was actually out to Carol Lauro's place. And Michio at that time was giving lectures at this little kind of church. And I remember it was my first drive out there. And most of the drive, Michio was sleeping. You know, we got there, it was about an hour and 15 minutes from Boston, from, you know, Brookline, the, the uh, house. And I get there, wake Michio up. And we were a little early. And um, I, I said, oh, Michio, we're here. And he says, oh, good. Uh, you go talk. You go talk first. I'll, I'll come back. I need to go to the toilet and uh, walk around. I need to stretch. You go talk. So I, I don't know how many different shades of red, purple, whatever. I think sweat came over me. And I said, Micho, talk about what? He goes, oh, you know much in Nakabatas. You just go talk. So <laughs> I, I, I still remember how, how terrifying it was. So I get up there, I don't know how many people there were, maybe 75, something, 100 people, I don't know how many people. Anyway, I got up there, I, I talked, who knows what I talked about. But what I'm grateful for is that was the beginning of Michio pushing me to give some lectures and start speaking, which I didn't before. So, right. and Warren, I, I will have to. Uh, no problem. To... So I thank him for that and thanks for this great gift. Thanks, Patina. Thank you, Warren, for sharing. Wonderful. All right. Next, we will go to Gabrielle Cushy. Gabrielle, um, I'm unmuting you, maybe. Yeah. Can you hear me? All okay? Yeah. Very good. 
Hi, everybody. It's a full house. I'm really happy that you're inviting me, and I'm glad that you're doing this. This is very special. And I had already, from the few stories I heard, I had to already, um, you know, hold my tears back. Um, very touching. And I'm, I'm not sure exactly what I, what I should uh, share with which you um, Maybe the first time I have been in a lecture with him in 1976 in um, in Holland it was the first time I had a chance to uh, see a study him, and it was also I think the first Macrobiotic conference in um, in Europe, as far as I remember. Um, and I was studying already uh, with books, uh, Osavers, and with his books. Uh, since 71 and um, I was very eager to travel there. At that time I was living still in Germany and um, took my uh, car up there and I was really happy to be in the lectures and I was sitting in front, I was like 28 years old and very um, eager to learn and study and so he uh, as you all probably have seen, he's using the pendulum a lot to show our uh, how our chakra open works, the right and the left, the clockwise and the counterclockwise. So he shows me to um, to demonstrate. And it was very special for me because the energy I could feel uh, when he was uh, doing um, counterclockwise on my female clockwise energy, I can see that. Danny is looking up and, <laughs> and so I hope I said that right. But anyway, it was, was so, so traumatic that I was so confused when he went counterclockwise. And it was like really interesting to hear that, to feel that myself. And at the same time, I was also at the cooking class with Lima and uh, Avelin at the same time. And they asked me to come and help with the serving of the, um, the food uh, in the cooking class. And so I, for me, coming uh, 1978 to America and have been studying then at the Cushy Institute, one of the first, at the first uh, class, and then later on was invited to stay at the Cushy house. And then later on, I have been, had the honor to uh, be, um, be their daughter-in-law. That was like the, the, don't know what to say further, but that was like the, very, very interesting for me because I um, don't know, but, um, and then now, um, 40 years later, I have been asked to dismantle the Cushy Institute and it was one of the hardest things for me, which I have done. And I had like about six months of post-traumatic stress symptom. <laughs> Um, but I'm recovered and I'm still working with uh, Michio's um, legacy and trying to um, have work with the, uh, the tapes we have. We have over 50 to 100 tapes and trying to organize them and put them in an order so we can um, uh, preserve them for future. And so that's like some personal information and I yeah, there have been some incidents which I like to share because I started with Macrobiotic uh, doing also the brown rice fast under Giorgio Saver. Everybody knows about those uh, fasts, I hope. And um, when I was living um, at the Cushy house and I mentioned to Michio I wanted to do the fast and he said to me, well, for you it's probably better if you do it in a milder way, like make a miso soup with brown rice and have some pickles. That will be and do it for six days to 10 days, maybe longer, see how you feel. It might be for your um, condition constitutional is a um, more um, a gentle way to do some cleanse. And so I wanted to share that if people feel like they want to strengthen their immune system um, to do some cleansing, that's a good way to do that. So do I still have time to share something else or am I good? <laughs> One more minute. One more minute. Okay, well, I had the honor of giving a massage to meet you once and um, the experience was amazing uh, because so many spirits I could feel coming in to him and helping him. It was like a, a huge cloud of energies coming in 
and spirits. And I think we have seen that often sometimes during his lectures when he was doing the healing with his hand, um, the spirits who came through him and helped him and supported his work on this earth. And I really praying for all of us that we can continue to um, work with his wisdom and knowledge and his spirit and i'm really grateful and happy birthday michio and um i'm trying to write um a little bit of an information about the uh, celebration we had in japan just on um on his six years anniversary of his uh, uh, death day the 28th of december in japan and we uh, they had a ceremony for him and um uh, some stones in um in a, in um in Nachi Katsura. So I will maybe write about it and we will further discuss this then and see what we can do with that information. All right. Happy Thank birthday. You. Thank you, Gabrielle. Thank you for having me. Thanks. And now we will go to Tom. Tom Monty. Uh, thank you. Um, am I off mute? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, good. <clears throat> well, thank you so much for inviting me to speak. Um, I remember so many things about what Michio taught me and so many remarkable experiences with him. But I, I oftentimes experienced with Michio that he would teach things that were so lasting and powerful in the most humble and sort of simple ways. And I remember in the mid 1980s um, that he did a spiritual seminar that I attended, and he uh, he 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 said just as apropos of nothing it seemed like he said when I look at somebody I don't just see their condition I see them in the, I want to see them in the most advanced most beautiful state that they could be in. And then I try to guide them toward that. And that was always said. And so when I, you know, when I started counseling and guiding people too, <clears throat> I stumbled across that same uh, truth. And it gave me a lot of inspiration, a lot of guidance. And I realized that what Michio was doing so often with people was he was planting seeds long in advance that when you stumbled across one discovery or another that you'd make later in life, you'd remember him. He planted that seed in you long, long ago. Um, I remember too that when I discovered and started doing that, I realized that it's the most loving way you could look at somebody. You don't get stuck in this place where whatever their condition is. He was saying, I don't get caught up in that, that kind of stuff. So I was, I'm looking at where they're going, not just where they are. And I was really deeply moved again and again by that guidance from him, because that is a form of love that uh, moves energy toward what is possible in life, not just what is. Where are we going in a way that makes everything better? Uh, and I am oftentimes reminded of that. Years later, uh, I encountered the Course in Miracles. And of course, it's right there in the Course in Miracles. You don't look, you're not meant to look at anybody from where they are currently. You're meant to see them in some larger terms. Uh, like Warren, I had many experiences with Micho in, in, in terms of his capacity for intuition. But I think this is one of the ways that Micho connected because it is a way of connecting with oneself and also with the other in love. And also it transcends fear because it makes people feel that, you know, I'm not just looking at you with what's going on now and what your mind may tell you to be, you know, to tell you to do with whatever the circumstances are, whatever negative point of view you may have or what, you, what negative outcome you think is possible. He was transcending fear by looking at the larger and looking at what's possible and looking at the positive he was moving everything beyond fear so like warren said it, it made everybody feel more inspired because that's what people want but not just hope but also from his perspective they wanted to hear someone say 
you know, you're moving in a much better direction doing this. And so I, I just was always touched by that with Mitchell, that he had a very positive, committed vision for people to become their better selves and to move way beyond fear. But I'll just take one more minute uh, to tell you a story that uh, it was something like what happened with Warren. Uh, my wife and I, when we were in Boston, we, my wife became pregnant and we, we had our children born at home, but um, we, uh, the second, our second child was not progressing in a way that, or at least we didn't know because the midwife could not determine when exactly she, we became pregnant. And so um, there was a question as to whether we could actually have a baby at home. Um, so there was that question for a while. So Michio, one day we were sitting having lunch and it just apropos of nothing said to me, how's your family doing? I said, well, you know, we have this problem. You know, the midwife doesn't know when exactly we became pregnant. And so we're not sure when we can, whether we can have a baby at home or not. And he, he did that thing he always does, but we, we all know. He sort of look over to your shoulder and sort of look into the space around your, your, your head. Uh, and above uh, to one side and he said your wife became pregnant three months and 17 days ago and everything's going to be fine so when the you know when the when the midwife finally determined when we had become pregnant you know those wheels that midwives use to determine when pregnancy and uh, conception was uh, took place I checked it out <laughs> I wanted to know what how many days was it when I saw me Joe he was on the calendar I knew and it worked out that it was three months, 17 days to the day from the day Micho told me. And so uh, many remarkable things like that happened with Micho. He was a magical, magical man. Uh, and uh, one of the most, you know, if not the most inspiring person I've ever met. So, yeah. Thank you, Tom. He's very happy where he is. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful. So next uh, we will go to Maggie, Maggie Cottrell. Maggie, are you there? I am here. All right. Well, I would, uh, I, first of all, like to share with you when I first met Micho. Uh, his oldest son called me. I was practicing medicine in New York City and director of Fashion Institute at that time. And uh, he was up on uh, 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 an apartment or a building up on Fifth Avenue. And um, so I went up there and uh, his son said, uh, Micho's running a little late. Uh, and he told me to tell you to go down to the um, a cafe below and he'll be down in just a minute. I said, okay. So I, I went down and I sat and Micho came in. Ah, he came in as a usual way. And uh, uh, I said, and I stood up because I felt like I was meeting God. And I got up and I had been studying uh, macrobiotics enough to know it was very Asian, very Japanese, very Oriental. And I had my hands like this and I bowed to Micho wanted to do everything perfectly. And, um, oh, he said, yes, yes, yes. Uh, sit down, sit down. Um, what would you like to have? And I am a coffee drinker to this day, black coffee drinker to this day. But I knew that everybody in macrobiotics drank tea and I wanted to do everything perfectly. So I said, Micho, I will have tea. Fine, 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 fine. Called over the waiter and he said, bring Dr. T and bring me coffee. <laughs> and I just, I just got such a kick out of that. And then we started talking about, uh, I had been recommended to be the medical uh, director for the AIDS uh, program in uh, Boston University. Uh, and I was so excited to, to, be, to have been chosen to do that. And I'm sitting there and it was like, uh, like Tom said, it was like he read my mind. I, I, just, I, I just wanted so much to study with him. And he said to me, Dr. Cottrell, would you like to study with me? 
And I said to him, Micho, there's nothing on the face of the earth that I would like more than to study with you. And that began many, many years. Then another thing that happened that was really funny, I, I, he, he was so delightful and brought so many smiles to me. Uh, one day I said to him, Micho, doctors are different from the rest of the people. They think differently. We should have a special uh, conference just for the doctors. Yes, 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 yes. You do it. And <laughs> I said to him, Micho, may I do it the way I want to do it? Yes, 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 you do it. So I, I set up this whole conference uh, uh, up in uh, Massachusetts and uh, Neil Barnard was one of my students. And Neil said, he sat there and he listened to everything that went on. He had, didn't have a clue what we were talking about. And I've often said to Neil, you know, Neil, if I never do anything in my life, having you as a student and going on to do all the wonderful work that you're doing makes my life worthwhile. And then the other thing I want, I want to share with you, I was in a, com a spiritual conference with him. And this is so appropriate to where we are now, I think. And then, and then there's one more that I'd like to share. Uh, Mito said, grab your fist and make a tight fist, make a tight fist. All right, Micho, all right. Tighter, tighter, tighter. And we got tighter. What do you feel? What do you feel? It hurts, Micho. Yes, tighter, 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 tighter. What do you want to do? We want to let go. It hurts, Micho. Yes, 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 yes. And we let go. We're shaking our, our hands out. And he said, we are in a very young phase. And it is going to be very painful, very, very painful. So painful that we will be catapulted into a high consciousness because we will not be able to deal with it anymore, to stand it anymore. And I think about that so often. And then the last thing I want to share with you was when my companion of almost 30 years, Cindy, paused, was very ill with cancer. And... Um, we were down in Hyde County at my country home down there. And Micho, bless his heart, I will never forget this. Micho sent a cook down there, paid her train fare and everything. And she stayed with us until Cindy passed away. I, I, I tell you, I have, had, I have so many stories about Micho. I traveled all over the world with him. Um, I miss him so much. But he is always with me. And um, I'm 92 years old. I'm not on any medication. I'm not overweight. I'm not obese. And I'm still full of piss and vinegar. And I am still raising hell. So here I am. Congratulations. <laughs> Wonderful. We are so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for this opportunity to honor this man that, and his wife, Aveline, that made such a difference in my life. I wouldn't be here today. I was brought up a Southerner. If you didn't have a piece of meat on the plate, you didn't have a meal. I doubt if I would have lived past 50 if it hadn't been for me, Joe and Aveline. So I'm extremely grateful. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Maggie. And next we will go to Jane and Lino. Jane Kincannon Stanchez and Lino um, Stanchez. And uh, I, let's see, I'm unmuting you, maybe. Why is it not working? Okay, Jane, you unmute yourself because I'm trying here and every time I do, then it goes back. There we go. Wonderful. Elena's first. <coughs> Hello. <laughs> Mitchell and I, uh, for a while, were living uh, very near. He was living on Boston Street, and I was living around the corner. And between the two corners, there's a coffee shop. And every morning, he would come there, drink a cup of coffee, his coffee. And, uh, and I actually bring 
organic coffee from New York, and I asked the owner to prepare that, and he was very happy to drink it, and of course he was smoking, and I just give up smoking, you know. So somehow it bothered me, and he would apologize. It's okay, Mitch, <laughs> you know, you can speak with the accent. You know, there's nothing wrong to do something uh, that the big think is bad, as long as you take the responsibility for it. So everything is okay. As long as you're willing to take the responsibility of what you're saying and what you're doing. And we had coffee many times, but I was traveling in those days. I was traveling to Canada and to California, and all over the place, and of course in New York. And when I was in New York, I was driving the car and I was taking him from New York to Boston. So we had two, two and a half hours to talk about, but, but he already was tired and talking to New York. So after about half an hour, he would say, I'm, I'm t- I wanna sleep. So he would sleep. I said, but stop me when you will come to a coffee place. And, and that's what it is. So we stopped you know, after one hour to have fresh coffee and so on. And there we were talking for about half an hour again. And he says, nothing is bad and nothing is illegal as long as you feel uh, the responsibility for it. You know? And when you see somebody, see the good part into them, you know, not how sick they are, but how healthy they are, you know, and then look how sick they are. So, so it t- teach me quite a, a few things there. So in the morning, he will have, he will have Two cup of coffee, you know. And I was looking at tea. Uh, and in 1976 in New York City, uh, I met him again, uh, and we, we, we had actually lunch together. And then we t- I, t- I took him with the car because, and I drove him to Boston, you know. And then I tell him about, you know, asking. Uh, I didn't feel too well, I didn't know why. And he says, why? And he says, you, you're trying too hard to, to be good, you know? So don't be afraid to lead a little wider, you know? And that really made me feel very good. So I started eating a little wider and not so narrower, you know? I try also have, a, you know, the tendon where I write several times. As he said, this is good for some people, but not to you, for me, you know. You, it makes you too young, too tight, you know, and uh, you need to eat more, eat more vegetables and so on. But this is for you only, you know. And, uh, and of course, he was smoking. I didn't smoke, and, and that was also bothering me. But he was asked, me, he was asked me permission to smoke. <laughs> so. So anyway, he has his coffee, he usually had two cups of coffee, and then, uh, then we'll separate, you know. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, the thing say, have a dream and do everything to, uh, to, to, to make the dream, dream come true, you know. As long as it's something constructive and is beneficial, to them and also to you too, you know. And we well, we saw about uh, maybe a dozen times this way, and I was very very uh, impressed that how uh, how permission permission he was uh, he had permission to do things the way I feel is the best, you know, as long as it's honest and it is sincere. And so, and of course, because we were very same, we were the two oldest in Boston, I also got a com- uh, massage from him and a consultation. And he said, you're in, you're in good condition, just continue this way. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I, whatever he is right now, I wish him a happy birthday. And may, <laughs> maybe one day meet again, whatever. Okay, and here's Jane. Thank you, Lino. That was wonderful. Okay, go ahead. Hi, all. 
Um, greetings to everybody and uh, to Mitro's family. And thank you, Bettina and Ed and Alex for organizing this. It's wonderful. Um, I was introduced to Micho in 1981 by my macrobiotic counselor and future husband, Lino, in Boulder, Colorado. And um, truly, Micho totally changed my life. He saved my life. Uh, I owe my life to, to Micho. And um, through the years, Micho's influenced some of the top nutritionists in the world and um, Neil Bernard, as Maggie mentioned, she brought him in and he's influenced so many people, Walter Willett from Harvard and on and on. I mean, the, the, uh, the impact he's had throughout the world is tremendous. And I, at this time, would like to very much thank all you teachers and authors who have helped him write his books, particularly Ed and Alex. Thank you so much for your dedication and your expertise with, the, with his, his legacy, his books. Um, I worked with Micho in consultations many, many times uh, for weeks on end in uh, Beckett and in Florida at the Macrobiotic Foundation and um, throughout the country where we would meet up at conferences. And um, one thing that he would always say to people after he greeted them and told them positive things about themselves, he would say, okay, now we begin. Uh, sing a happy song every day. That was the first recommendation he would give people. And um, in addition to that, he would tell people in detail how to make miso soup and how to boil the greens. And he used to go like this. Those of you who worked with him know this. Boil the greens in hot water. And he'd go like this. He would take the time and patience to teach people recipes. Uh, I was astounded. I really was. And um, again, he would tell people, sing a happy song every day. And Lino and I tried to do that every day. When Micho's collection was put at the Smithsonian at the Museum of American History, uh, Micho and Aveline were honored tremendously, and all you macrobiotic teachers were honored too. Um, it was quite a wonderful event, and the collection is still in the Smithsonian Institute, and it's a, a wonderful honoring of Micho and Ab Aveline's lifelong work. Um, the day after that big gala at the Smithsonian, big dinner, we all went over to um, the Senate and there into the Congress, and we um, heard Micho present to um, a congressional committee on cancer, the macrobiotic program for cancer prevention and um, treatments. And he. It, it, when you do this, you have to read a prepared statement. So he did. It's a very wonderful prepared statement on the causes of cancer, the dietary influences. And after he finished reading, he asked um, the chairman, Dan Burton, a big Republican, uh, but someone who is very interested in health, if he could have a moment to add one thing to his recommendations. And you can guess what he said. <laughs> I would like to recommend that everybody sing a happy song every day. And the whole room broke up with laughter. And Dan Burton said, okay, Mr. Cushy, I am going to sing You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog <laughs> to the mirror every day. And of course, everyone laughed and um, this just brings out that wonderful part that Bettina mentioned and others that Micho felt like life was to play. And um, I was, I guess, at the same lecture as Bettina when people asked him, what is the purpose of life? And we were all thinking, 
um, you know, helping humanity and striving and working, working hard, planting and striving. And he said, the purpose of life is to play. And he, his work was play to him. I think he loved it, enjoyed it. I know he did. And um, he has touched my life tremendously. I really seriously would not be here. Uh, if I hadn't met Micho, if Micho hadn't met my husband, and uh, and I'll give myself credit for, for doing macrobiotics all these years, 40 years now. Um, and it's been just the most rewarding um, actions in my entire life. And, um, and I would just like to I thank Micho, thank all of you, and um, bless you, Micho. Arigato. Um, may your eternal spirit be in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Wonderful. All right. And next we're going to Carol. Carol Luro. Give me one moment here. Okay, Carol, can you? Tabitha, can you unmute this? Yeah, we're, you're good. You can hear me? Yes. Oh. I <laughs> okay, I want to say that I'm, I myself, I also am very, very grateful to have met Micho through my parents. He helped my father with a tubercular kidney. And I'm grateful that my father was so grateful that he gave instruments. And I said, why are you giving those instruments? He said, I'm never going to be able to repay Micho. And he has many children. And when I was listening to Warren, I'm talking about um, the lecture that Warren talked about today. And he had, and I said the same thing, maybe 75 to 100 people. And after he was done, Micho was done lecturing, he relaxed and he looked up and he said, it's so nice to see so many friends here tonight. And he looked at a woman in the balcony and said, you need to clean the southwest corner of your house. And she said, what? You've never been to my house. You don't even know me. And they're saying, Micho, Micho, look at me. And he said, I, I'll say this. He said, everyone ask Micho one question. I'll go in the next room, sit down. And everyone went up to Micho. We stayed there for about an hour later. Maybe people would think that was a long night. We thought it was a wonderful night. And one thing I, this is off my cuff, when Warren was talking, um, I needed to get watermelon for some reason. And now I'm wondering if this was Mitchell's thinking. So we stopped at a farm stand and I apologized and said, I got to run in and get a watermelon. I didn't know why I wanted it and I got it. We come back to my house we're ready to eat the watermelon. I cut it all up, Warren and I and my husband. We we're all ready to eat the watermelon. Micho was talking on the phone. His daughter was sick at the house at the time. And he comes into the, to the kitchen and says, Carol, where can I find watermelon at this time of night? And we all had it in our hands. So he, we, nev we never ate it. He made watermelon juice and he brought it home. And he helped so many people in that area and never ever criticized anybody if they weren't following his directions, if they went off track. He was always, he was always very kind and very patient. He had one young man that, um, can you still see me? Yes. Okay. He had one young man that the father said to me, Carol, all I want is for Micho to look at my son and then I know I've done everything God wants me to do for him. The son was in critical condition in the intensive care. Micho would not go to the hospital. He said it was disrespectful. So we took pictures. He said, take pictures of the young man. Micho came to my house, looked at the pictures and he said, they said he'll never urinate again. Micho said, do this, this and this. Pee will come out in three days. They, two times they said to him, the doctor said no. And he never once said, what did I tell you? Instead, he said, do this, this, and this, and pee will come out in three days. 
he is healthy until this day. And that's through Micho. And Micho helped a lot of people in this area and a lot of doctors he helped and a lot of doctor's wives. And I had a doctor, an oncologist tell me, I had never seen anyone as sick as this person. Can I say her name? Not her last name, just a, okay. okay. Well, I'll say Callum, okay? <laughs> and he said, I all my, years of practice, I've never seen anyone as sick as Carol do as well as she did. And everyone feels blessed around here to have known Micho and to have seen him. And we really not going to be able, I feel I cannot repay him in this lifetime. I have a lot of work to do to repay Micho and Abilene. And that's my story. Thank you, Carol. You're Thank welcome, you. Christina. Take care. You too. All right, then we'll go to Denny. Denny and Susan Waxman. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm very touched and can relate to uh, everyone's stories and remembrances about Michio, and especially his unbelievable intuition and psychic ability that he had. So, I, had no, I didn't have a clue what to say. So the first time I met Michio, uh, February or March of 1969, he came to, elect, to Philadelphia to lecture, arranged by Rod and Peggy House. And I got there early and Michio walked in and I went up to him and I said, introduced myself and said, I'm gonna start a macrobiotic store. Do you have any advice for me? And he thought for a second and then he said, I've been to many macrobiotic stores and restaurants and they're all dirty. None of them are macrobiotic. <laughs> keep it clean. I said, anything else? He said, no, keep it clean. <laughs> I must say I was a little disappointed, but I figured I asked, I'll follow his advice. And wouldn't you know that everyone that came into the store would say, this store is so clean. So that was number one. Number two, um, yeah, okay, so number two, one time in, in, in Philadelphia, after a lecture, um, we were talking, and he said to me, I was born too soon, and I will never live to see the fruits of my labors, but you will, and it really touched me, and Michio, I'm counting on it because now it's time that all of our collective labors uh, in macrobiotics bear fruit more than ever. So that I'm hoping that that is one of his psychic uh, predictions that that really will come true. Then my last conversation with Michio, I called him up to say I was going to the European teachers meeting. Did he have any message or anything for me to convey to the people there? And he said a few things and he made some comments. And then finally he said, a real teacher, the mark of a real teacher is training other teachers. So that's how you know a macrobody teacher. They train many other teachers. And I thought going to a teacher's meeting, that was, you know, how can I accomplish that at least myself for the next phase? Finally, an anecdote about, because I thought it was supposed to be something humorous, um, an anecdote about him and Aveline. It was, I guess, sometime in the 70s, and I can't remember which study house. It might have been University Road. But I was there, and I wanted to talk to him about some problem in the Philadelphia community. And I got there early, and I'm waiting one hour, two hours, <laughs> two and a half hours. And Mitchell comes to do this and walks by, not now, not now. Then finally, he said, I'm going out for coffee. And then Aveline came up to me. As soon as he walked out to the door, she said, wait by the door. Soon as he bends down to take off his shoes, then ask him. <laughs> so here I am waiting by the door, waiting by the door. Finally, Micho walks in. I'm still waiting. He bends down. Micho, <laughs> do you have time to talk to me now? Yes, let's talk. <laughs> so I thought, okay, so who's the real master of strategy here? Aveline certainly nailed that one. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, again, I've 
I appreciate your organizing this and everyone's stories and remembrances. Thank you. Should I talk? If you have anything. Um, uh, so my experience with Michio was quite different from a lot of you. Um, he was more humorous with me and shared different things almost like um, a father or a grandfather would share with them. Like he was talking to me the one time, he was interested in my whole family history and would ask me this and would ask me that. And he was always teasing with me and saying very, you know, just like funny things. And, he's, and he was telling me the one time about how a princess sits and he's like, I'll show you. He said, this is the way you must sit now. And, <laughs> and but it was just kind of very touching a, a lot of, things that he would say, many different things that I don't even recall everything. Um, the one funny story, uh, after Denny and I were married, he, we came to Boston to see him and he wanted to take us out to dinner. And um, he even ordered sake. Well, first he brought us each like a big, huge thing of coffee and then <laughs> we didn't want, but <laughs> he insisted that we drink that first too. A lot of coffee <laughs> stories here. Um, and then ordered sake. And Denny had to excuse himself to go use the toilet. And Michio says, ah, he said, so you're sitting next to the wisest man in the world mm -hmm. um, and you have nothing to ask him? And I was just like, looked at him, I said, oh, I said, you mean Denny? I said, he <laughs> is really brilliant, isn't he? And Michio just busted up <laughs> laughing. <laughs> but, um, and I was just like, you know, again, young and naive, not thinking, you know, like, I guess he was referring to himself, of course. <laughs> and I thought he was referring to Denny. So that was one humor story. And then the other one is every time that um, we would call him or he would call him here, he would always ask us to speak to me. And the first thing out of his mouth was, Susan, is Denny still handsome? And I would say, oh, yes, Denny's very handsome, Michio. And then I would say to him, and you, Michio, what about you? Are you still handsome? And he said, oh, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm brilliant, shining. <laughs> so this was like kind of our thing before we actually started talking about everything else. And I just remember him that way. I remember him sharing a whole history of him as a young man and a child going through Hiroshima too. He was explaining like the whole strategy uh, behind everything and like really like things that prompted the war and everything, which was, again, it was like fascinating because like he's just an endless wealth of historical knowledge too. So yeah, lots of interesting things. And thank you for organizing this. It's really nice. It's wonderful seeing everybody and getting to hear everybody's stories. They're very touching and moving and um, hope to see you all in person sometime soon. <laughs> Take good care everyone, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. And we will take a short musical interlude just for two minutes. It's uh, the Habanera by Bizet. Mm -hmm.
and uh, you know all of us here in a way reminds me also a little bit of uh, all of us in concert <laughs> having so many different voices so i would like to open it up to the public but the way i think we will proceed to make it a little bit not overwhelming that everybody's unmuting themselves and trying to talk at the same time so i would like to invite people whose first name and maybe the person who's on the phone but anybody whose first name or they have signed in with either a or b or c they can unmute themselves and you know share a short uh, if they if anybody chooses share a short uh, reminiscence about Michio anything that um, you know you remember that would be uplifting to us so anybody who signed in with either a b or c anybody may i just say one thing it's carol yes okay the last time Nicho spoke, the last time he came to New Bedford area, we took pictures and we have a picture of him with the word heaven over his head. We never realized it. And when we developed them, can you see the picture? You have to lift it up. Up. Higher. There. Do you see it? And it's got heaven over it. So, so. The white spot, it says heaven. Yes. I just like sharing that. So thank you, Bettina. Thank you, everybody. Somebody else. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm having trouble with the sound. Um, Me too, I don't know, but go ahead. All right. Um, I was in the last KI level four class that graduated before Michaud passed. And he came, he, he arranged for us as a class to come to Boston to some motel there. And he talked to us about what we were doing and what was ahead for us. And I, I will never forget because he said, you didn't do this just for yourself. You can't take this training just for yourself. It's about the social. It's about the social. And he made that point so strongly. And it was kind of like an explosion in my head because it was, yeah, one peaceful world. And this is how you do your little bit to help to make bring in one peaceful world and i will never forget that um it was awesome thank you kathy thank you Sherry. yes i remember that last level where i will mute you very good anybody else in a b or c their name signed in beginning with A, B, or C. If not, then we go to... Bettina, do you know about the raise hand feature? If you click on the participant thing on the bottom, then on the right panel comes down with everyone's name. On the bottom there, it says raise hand. If someone clicks on that, then you, you can call on people. Just a thought. Okay, let me just see. Raise, I should know that, but um, somehow today it is not, I cannot find it. I have seen it other times, but today. If you click on the participants thing, then they all come up on the right. The very bottom of that, it says invite, mute me, or raise hand. At least on mine. That's it it doesn't say on mine, it no. says. Uh, I mean, it says invite, mute all, unmute all, and under more, there is, okay, but there's raise hand, is, there's only lower all hands, but not raise hands. So. Uh, maybe for others. I don't know. We use it in our webinars, so. Get participants. Yeah. I, I, mean, I am under participants. I see everybody. <laughs> On the bottom, you've clicked participants? Because it says 68 people are in it. 
yeah, yeah. I am. I have the panel open on the right, and I see the. But I, for me, it doesn't show up under with raise hand. For oh, whatever. people have raised their hands there. Ah, there we go. Okay, you can raise your hand now. I can see you. Wonderful. Okay, let's do it this way. So let's go to Felisa. So I will unmute you, Felisa. Okay. Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Beautiful. First of all, thank you for hosting this. It's an amazing opportunity for us to share. And thank you to all of the teachers that have shared the amazing stories that you have about Michio. And I just want to wish Michio a happy birthday. And Michio really impacted my life in so many ways. And I just feel that it's a blessing for all of us that we had the opportunity to be with him. And Misha was definitely a, a, an amazing channel for miracles. He was so tapped into so many different areas of the universe and understanding that most of us cannot even begin to comprehend. And we got a little glimpse of, uh, you know, all of the things that he was able to accomplish in his lifetime and the legacy that he leaves behind. And I know that, you know, one of his missions was to leave behind one peaceful world and I think to myself, what would Michio be telling us today? And there are so many things that he'd be saying about this pandemic, and he probably already forecasted and knew that this was going to happen. But, uh, you know, it, it's interesting that when we were told to start washing our hands and sing happy birthday twice, you know, one of the first things I thought of, ah, it's about Michio singing a happy song. So uh, may we all be blessed with happiness and all of the teachings that Michio gave over to us, that we should continue this in our lifetimes, that uh, we, were, we were totally blessed, you know, to have encountered everything that we learned from him. And uh, we should be joyous about, you know, our connection to him because it's, it's everlasting. So thank you everyone for sharing. And it's, it's really a thrill for me to see so many people, so many faces that I remember from my past. And it's, it's a very happy time to be able to celebrate Michio's birthday together. So may God bless everyone. Thank you, Felisa, wonderful. Good to hear from you. And we will go to Michael Rossoff. Hey, hi there. Hi. Uh, let me get my picture on. Hi everyone, um, I've enjoyed listening to everybody's stories. Uh, I just want to share a, um, two quick vignette stories from my experience with Micho. The first is when I first met Micho, the first day I met him back in 1969. Uh, I was coming from a hippie world, long hair, and uh, I didn't think he would know who I was, and he didn't, but he immediately, when I was introduced to him, turned me around, felt my spine, turned me back and said, uh, you've got this and this and this problems, you need to do macrobiotics. And I was there because I was interested in macrobiotics, but he immediately picked up that there was some uh, dilemma in me. And he said, uh, I tell you what, you do it for one year, and then at the end of a year, you decide if this is the path you wanna take. And that made all the difference for me. It made me feel confident I wasn't committing to some great long uh, lifetime without knowing what I was fully getting into. So that was uh, very powerful for me. The other experience I wanna share is uh, many years later, back in the 1980s, um, I was, Mitra had spoken in Washington DC and I was driving him to Baltimore to talk there with Murray's uh, Center. And uh, as we're driving up, it's a long drive, especially with all that traffic. Michio is kind of dozing and, and I would want to ask him questions when he would wake up a little bit. And he was still not really paying attention. And then I asked a question that I'd never even finished asking because I said, I am really curious about, and before I could say any more, he just stood up or sat up and said, curiosity, that's the greatest thing we possess and we need to keep that in our lives. And it was very uh, 
powerful moment. So uh, that those are my brief stories about Micho, and thank you for making this happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. All right, next we will go to Carol Raftis. And I'm not sure that I'm pronouncing your name right. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Wonderful. Um, hello, everyone. And I'm thanking Ed, Alex, and you, Bettina, for this magnificent event. And I am saluting all the wonderful teachers that are here and um, just feeling so thankful. That's just a short word to express my deepest gratitude. Thank you, Carol. Uh, then, Denardo. Hi, my first name is Pam. It's not on here because I share this laptop with my daughter, so we just have our last name on. Um, unfortunately, I never had the pleasure of meeting uh, Michio, and especially after hearing all these wonderful stories, I, I wish I had. Um, but he, he did impact my life in a very significant way and that I lived at the Jersey Shore um, when I was in my late 20s. And I came to a macrobiotic Thanksgiving dinner in the Delaware Water Gap in Pennsylvania, about 100 miles from my home. And it's there that I met my future husband, and we've been together for 30 years. So uh, I directly attribute that because I had become involved in macrobiotics and decided to take this chance and adventure on going to this dinner. So that was very significant in my life. But what I've been really interested to hear today is how um, we should sing a happy song every day. I work as a preschool teacher and I can tell you that we sing many happy songs every day. So what I got out of it too is that we need to keep um, the spirit of the happy child alive in us in order to keep our hearts open and um, have a happy life. So anyway, I'm, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so very much for organizing this. Thank you, Pam. Nice to see you here. And Sherry. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, do I need to unmute? Or no, you, you we can unmute me. Oh, OK. So my fondest memories were in uh, level four when Michio taught us, um, he would bring children in and he'd show videos of them. And at the time I was a guidance counselor. So I was really curious because oftentimes I would have kids with ADD and autism that, you know, I just felt like it was the end of the world for them, that there was really no hope. And um, I also help scribe a lot. So I saw a lot of people come in after they saw him once and then come back um, after a period of time. And I remember this one boy who was walking on his toes and really couldn't focus. He shook and, um, he, you know, he's, he was pretty severely um, autistic. And um, I happened just to be there in six months later when he returned and I was just blown away. I mean, his feet were relaxed. He was speaking more, he was more focused. So I, it just touched my heart so much. And um, so in level four, uh, Misha would show videos of kids. Some, sometimes we bring him videos of kids we were working with. And I specifically remember this one little girl, and it was a video of her in Amsterdam playing the violin. And he wanted us to listen to the violin music and then tell him what we thought she ate too much of. <laughs> so we had, we were making lists of everything. We were like completely clueless as to what, and he, was listening on and on. I mean, it, it was almost an hour that he sat there and listened to this girl play violin. And we thought, oh my gosh, what is he doing? And finally, you know, after we exhausted all our, our food um, choices, he turned to us and he said, <clears throat> listen closely to the music. It sounds like the sea, like the ocean. 
And sure enough, you know, it sounded like waves in the ocean. He said, um, her mother fed her too many mussels. <laughs> so that was just one of the ones. Um, and there was a, one other child that came. Um, she was also autistic and she was chewing on a, a dishcloth all the time, just drooling. She was like two years old. And he, again, he asked us what, what we thought, you know, the mother fed her too much of. And we were totally off base. And finally he said, um, goat's milk, that she was becoming like a goat, chewing on a rag and drooling. So I was always amazed and, um, you know, his level of diagnosis. And oftentimes when I would scribe, I would feel that he would leave his body somehow and go to where that person is. Because one time I was talking to him about my father and um, I felt like he disappeared, you know, and, and he was actually looking at my father from a different, whole different realm. So it was very inspiring. And um, I always remember the one answer he gave me, you know, when I used to ask him what his successes were. And he said, I don't have any successes. Um, I only helped push you all forward. All right, thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Um, then you will go, Brian, are you oh, hey. ready? Me? Cooking, yeah. Because yeah cooking. You're doing this right during cooking time. I can't believe everyone here isn't actually in their kitchen cooking. And so, well, that's because so, it's your, that's your time, but you know, in other time zones. I know, we, live, we both live in Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you can also make lunch and have leftovers for dinner. But, <laughs> So, uh, would it be okay if I sang a song? Go ahead. Uh, all right, this song is, uh, first I have to apologize to Sammy Davis Jr. who did an amazing job at this, and I have a horrible voice. Uh, this actually might be the first time I've ever sung a song in front of people, not really in front of people in this case, but uh, there was one other time, it was a very small group. Uh, what I like about this song is that it, it sort of, uh, is right on that line, uh, it, it rides that razor's edge between uh, the infinite and being a human being. And I really love that about it. And it goes, and uh, again, I apologize for my voice. Every time we say goodbye, I die a little. Every time we say goodbye, I wonder why a little. Why the guys above me who must be in the know think so little of me, they'd allow you to go. When you're near, there's such an air of spring about it. I can hear a lark somewhere begin to sing about it. There's no love song finer. Hmm. This is what happens when you don't sing much. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I, can't sing much. I think this it's is fun. But how strange the change from major to minor. Yes, who's saying that? <laughs> Me. Oh, I'm no a Cole Porter fan. <laughs> <laughs> so, so start me up again. There's no song. But how strange the change from major to minor. How strange the change from major to minor. Every time we say goodbye. Every time we say goodbye. That's it. Thank you very much, Michio. Thank okay. you. I think this is um, a wonderful uh, time to um, conclude this part of our session and we will just um, go into just a few more announcements and then um, a short meditation to conclude our afternoon here or afternoon here in Massachusetts anyways maybe other times in other areas of the country or uh, world so uh, 
as you may have heard, this year we have changed our summer conference to an online summer conference simply because, uh, you know, the way things are going here, even Tanglewood, which is one of the major uh, music institutions here in this part of the world uh, is canceled, has canceled the whole summer season. So, and people are not as excited to travel at this time. So we are changing the format to an online format. And this for the online summer conference, however, we will also have online cooking classes. So we have um, three, four days for you scheduled. I mean, starting, well, it's four and a little bit. Um, starting on Wednesday night with a welcome introduction session and then um, three, maybe four days of uh, um, cooking classes, lectures, you know, special lectures, keynotes, and also um, the Michio Kushi Peace Prize at the end and you know all kinds of wonderful things including also a skit um, that uh, i hear Sherry will uh, um, help us to um, put together and uh, yeah we are very, very excited so this year uh, everybody can join from the comfort of your home and let me just see um, let's see uh, ed where are you? Let me see. Are you there? Ed, uh, did you want to say something? I do. I do. First of all, I want to thank really everybody for today's incredible event. Especially like to thank Bettina for her effort uh, in coming up with this idea and doing it in a really wonderful way. Um, we are entering a most incredible period now. Uh, we are entering that period, I think Denny said, where he hoped, and I hope, that the work that we've all done begins to have the impact that it needs to have in order for humanity to pass through this particular period as we approach the year 2036. Let me quote briefly from my favorite president, John F. Kennedy. Quote, the Chinese used two brushstrokes to write the word crisis. One brushstroke stands for danger, the other for opportunity. In a crisis, be aware of the danger but recognize the opportunity. So let us, right, let us all join uh, together as a macrobiotic world community as we pass this period entering the year 2036. So in that spirit uh, of unity, which Micho always inspired and Micho always was advancing, um, this year's summer conference Let's create something like this event, which was amazing. A macrobiotic summer conversation in which everyone weighs in, everyone has an opinion, everyone has a chance to express together. And from that, we learn and we develop. And very hopefully by 2021, we'll be able to meet together in person. Bettina, what do you predict? I certainly hope so. I mean, it would be wonderful to have everybody together in person again and to celebrate together because yeah. physically together we can... Well, you know. here's what we have to say we want to see, and that's Maggie Cottrell on the dance floor, okay? We want to see that at least one, many more times, but beginning in 2020, 2021. Maggie, are you with that? Is she there? Yeah, she's there. Uh, I not only sing, but I dance. <laughs> okay. Sometimes with my little dog. Yes, yes, yes. So 2021, <laughs> we want to be with you on the dance floor, okay? Oh, that would be wonderful. All right. And I've actually looked at the calendar for that. Maybe let's tentatively pencil in August 11th through August 17, 2021. For coming up to East Over and having our conference. 
And actually, I didn't say this year's conference will be August 12th through August 16th, and I should have said that, and I totally failed to do so. But so next year would be a, a day before. So you said at the, the 11th through the 17th. That would be 2021. 20, yeah, including the trip out to the South River rice field for our meditation. And also the trip, the first time for everyone to see the Aveline Memorial Site, the new memorial site in Beckett, near the Cushy property, the Cushy Institute property. So hopefully we can all join at that time. And meanwhile, back to this year, let's join again, the Tino August 12th yes. through the 16th online for continuing guys really continuing the conversation we've just started here today i think micho is very much behind all of this encouraging us to unify to put aside whatever differences or any issues we've had over the past years and because everybody is healthy and strong there were many issues putting them aside and coming together and unifying to really help the world pass through this most uh, uh, critical and also opportunity time. Okay, so let's do that together. Anyway, thank you all. It was wonderful. Really, thank you. Thank you, Ed. And Alex. Uh, Bettina, thank you, uh, Ed. Uh, I'd just like to follow up. Uh, in addition to the uh, Macrobiotic Summer Conference website, which I think most of you are familiar with, we also have a new website, planetaryhealth.com. And we've just started to post articles on that site, including the most up-to-date uh, coronavirus guidelines. Um, also, we, we have an online store, some of our latest books, including Strengthening Natural Immunity, uh, which uh, Ed Bettina and I put together Again, guidelines for, for the present crisis. Uh, also, Ed, did you mention the Micho book? He did earlier. Okay, anyway, that book is now available and you can order that uh, at the online store. Again, it's planetaryhealth.com. We also have several other websites, including uh, macropedia.com, that's M A K R O P E D I A.com which is a macrobiotic encyclopedia, online encyclopedia with information on diet health and the environment. Um, also amberwaves.com, which was our original, uh, no, amberwavesofgrain.com, which was our original um, network to help prevent genetic engineering. So those activities are still continuing. And then uh, one of our most recent activities is the Diabetes Project, which we are now uh, organizing and to be held in conjunction with the Berkshire Medical Center, which is the large hospital here in the Berkshires. Uh, last uh, autumn, we finally got the green light from the doctors to go ahead. And so we have a, um, a fundraising campaign, which got a little bit interrupted during the corona epidemic. And we have a challenge grant of a $5,000 matching grant. So if anybody can give us donation for that uh, study, it will be matched uh, by one of our uh, supporters. So those are just some of the uh, other activities that we're engaged in. And we again hope that you will join us uh, this summer and um, stay tuned for our weekly e-blasts that are sent out with ongoing information. We also have a blog uh, on the e-blast and we welcome your contributions and your articles and your news. So again, we can develop our, our global international macrobiotic community. So thank you once again for participating and hope to see you again soon. Thank you, Alex. So take, let's take one more moment to um, take a very brief meditation just to um, sense our own personal power because 
especially in this time where you know there is a big fear factor out there and sometimes that can somewhat also negatively impact our own personal energetic uh, field so let's connect to our personal power so just for a moment take a moment to close your eyes relax taking a few deep cleansing breaths in and out and which with each exhalation waves of relaxation are washing over you washing through you from head to toe and more and more vestiges of stress and tension anxiety is leaving relaxing waves of relaxation washing over you washing through you and sense within yourself the source of power from which your own breathing and life comes forth. Don't second guess it, don't 25th guess it. Trust your first impulse, your first intuition. Allow it to be whatever it is and allow it to arise or emanate from wherever it is emanating from without forcing. And when you feel that source within yourself, try to sense this power flowing outward from your entire being, through the pores of your body, through your fingertips, your toes, in all directions outward with yourself as the center. And imagine the rays undiminished reaching through the roof above, the foliage, the clouds above, through the center of the earth below, extending into the farthest reaches of the universe. Just feel yourself expanding more and more. and then letting it go. Coming back, coming back, and taking the feelings that you had with you, knowing of where the source of power is emanating from within you. And thank you, Michio. Thank you for what you have shared with us, for the gifts that you have given us, for the joy that you have shared. And thank you, all of you who are here and uh, who have made this really a special time. Thank you for sharing. I hope to see you again sometime. Take care. Bye bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Janet. Bye-bye. Hi, Nia. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. You're all beautiful, by the way. Mm. Thank you. Bye. All. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank Bye. you. You can see he was participating. Yeah. I would have I said, I told him, I'm not going to go. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not going to go. I know, but they don't really.
have anything to say in the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.